All right. Let's start this talk with a small dream. To begin, I'll need a volunteer with a phone and a calendar app. Um, I'll also need participation from the audience. Uh, so, with the suit, yeah. Could you tell me when your birthday is? Jan 31st, 2007. Jan 31st, 2007. Now, wouldn't it be fascinating if I could tell you what day of the week he was born on, just based on the birth date alone? Adi, was that a Wednesday? It was a Wednesday. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this might seem like just a party trip, but I promise you, it's something more. It's a glimpse into how math rewards exploration. Now, I'll admit, I'm biased. I love math, but most people don't feel the same way. They believe they just aren't a math person, and they liked it before all the letters appeared. The X's and Y's tangle into a thicket of symbols. It's like stumbling into an overgrown forest where every new vine spells out a new formula you never agreed to follow. Today, let's try to reframe that. Let's learn how to traverse through this forest and explore what lies within. Exploration often begins by asking questions. Don't worry, we won't be solving any math problems. Instead, we'll be asking seemingly bizarre, wonderfully irrelevant queries about our world. For example, how many squirrels could I fill in this massive room? What are the odds I share my birthday with someone in this room? Or what was the day of the week on 5th of July, 2008? These questions seem pointless, and honestly, they are. But solving them draws you in. It reveals deeper patterns and relationships with mathematical ideas that aren't always visible at first glance. School often takes this overgrown forest of mathematical ideas and flattens it into a restrictive map. Complex notation become barriers. Strict structures and formal terminology become tedious checkpoints. And on top of it all, the gross amount of assignments and deadlines, mind-numbing memorization of formulas, you end up lost in this genre. But it wasn't meant to be this way. George Cantor, a mathematician famous for his work on infinity, once said, the true essence of maths lies in its freedom. And the questions we ask help reveal that. They help us remove the constraints and remove the pressure, remove the exams and the grades, and maths can reveal itself as the most intricate and beautiful puzzle, an unexplored continent of logic and pattern. And these questions I urge you to ask, they are very subjective. I can't push my questions onto you. The same questions that led me to this calendar trick won't be the same for you. And that's fine. In fact, it's how it should be. To appreciate math, these questions should stem from your own curiosity in everyday life. Each question you ask is your own trail through the wilderness. Ask, why does this work the way it does? Or what if I approach this differently? Start by finding patterns and oddities, things you've taken for granted in everyday life. The questions you asked do not need immediate answers. They are just an invitation to wander deeper into the genre. It's kind of funny. The most famous question in maths class is where will I ever use this in real life? It reveals how disconnected we've become with the exploratory spirit of mathematical thinking. But when we solve our questions and they lead us down new rabbit holes we never knew existed, we reconnect with the spirit of discovery. And this pushes us to ask even more bizarre questions, further venture in, into this forest. And over time, this turns into an essential skill 
of not just asking more questions, but the right questions, not just in math, but whatever may be your life's pursuit. The second part of exploration is finding answers to the questions we ask. This is when, this is where most people back out. And it's fair. What are the odds uh, I share my birthday with someone in this room? How, where would I even begin to answer this? But there are no rules here. You can cheat, you can search up the answer, use whatever helps. But finding the answer and getting your hands dirty is the key, is the key to traverse this forest. And when that light bulb finally clicks, when you find that answer, this winding forest with, with all its trails will finally start to make sense. This is what will make you good at math. This is what will make you appreciate math. And most importantly, this is what will urge you to further explore this forest. The questions and answers we find aren't just an exercise to explore this forest. It is the key that spots major discoveries in mathematics. Take Isaac Newton. His bizarre question was, why do planets follow their elliptical orbits? The question wasn't born out of necessity. It was out of sheer wonder. At the time, it seemed like a trivial musing. But the answer to his question led to calculus. Today, calculus is how your GPS can navigate traffic in real time. It is how your TV can recommend the perfect shows for you to binge watch next. It is how social media apps can curate the perfect feed for you to doom scroll for hours. Maths, approached as exploration, transcends utility. It allows us to ask what if and chase through the wilderness, allowing us to uncover hidden structures and discover the logic, beauty, and symmetry of our world. So, if you've ever hated math, I urge you to reframe it. Start small, let yourself wonder, and ask insignificant questions. You might just find that math is far more accessible, beautiful, and transformative than you've ever imagined. Thank you.